Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to the first class of Quick Test Professional. The objective of today's class are What is Quick Test Professional? Prepare to automating the Quick Test Professional. Understanding the application under test. Taking a first look at add-ins for QTP. Understanding Quick Test Professional user interface. And then finally, setting up preferences in QTP before recording. Okay, so now let us start the class by getting to know what exactly is Quick Test Professional. QTP is basically a functionality testing tool. This is the most commonly used tool for, for functional testing. Quick Test Professional is a product of Mercury Interactive and the current version of the QTP in the market is 9.0 version and this version was released in second quarter of 2006. The important advantages of Quick Test Professional or I would say the advantages of functional testing is reusability, consistency and productivity. Reusability because you can reuse these automated test scripts during different phases of testing and it is Consistent because these automated test scripts provide the same result every time you every time you run them unless there is any defect in the application or there are any changes in the application. And then lastly productivity because all these automated test scripts can be run unattended. Unattended means that it basically means that a person does not have to be present at the time you are like running these test scripts. You can just put the test script to run and then you can do other jobs. So in this way, these test scripts can be run unattended and hence the testing resource can be used somewhere else in, can be used somewhere else for accomplishing other tasks. Hence, one of the main advantages is productivity. Okay, so base, so I hope that all of you have understood what exactly is uh, Quick Test Professional, why it is used, and what are the main advantages of using a tool for regression testing. Meaning, what are the main advantages for automating the regression testing? So now. Let us move on to the next topic, which is what are all the things that we need to pre that we need to prepare before, before we begin to automate a testing. The first and the first and foremost important thing is the application should be stable. When I mean stable, I mean that the application should not have any defects and also we should be very sure that the application will not be having any major changes pretty soon. So only then we should decide to automate the testing. Or else let us say that if there are like any major defects or even maybe if the application is like going to be changed pretty soon then automating such an application testing will will be like a lot of work for you in the future you will basically end up making changes to the automated test scripts and and also like making these changes it is going to take a lot of time it is going to take much more time than actually recording a new test script so always you should be very sure that the application is stable. This is one of the major criteria for automating an application testing. And the next important thing is before you begin to automate any particular test case, you need to execute that test case manually. 
This is because only when you execute a particular test case, you will know what is the output of each and every step. You will know what to expect from the application. You will basically get to know how the application behaves whenever you like perform any particular action. So that is why that is why first you need to execute the test case manually and then you should begin to record the test script for that test case. And then the next important thing is you need to verify that the data is available. This is because see in like uh, many test cases you might be able to use junk data in order to test the application so in that case it is okay you can just enter like you know whatever data you want but in some applications you will need to use the production data in order to test that application only then you will be able to test the functionality of the application so in such cases you need to make sure that the data is available for you in order to you know like begin recording the test scripts and also you need to make sure that what is a valid data and then what is an invalid data for your application. That is very, very important or else what might happen is when you are like, when you are like performing any particular step, you might enter some invalid data and you might get some other behavior other than the, other than the one that you are expecting from the application. And also if you are like going to run your scripts for like several iterations, you need to make sure that you have enough data in order to complete the several test runs. For many of you who do not know what is an iteration, iteration means basically one set of flow. Let us say that there is a test script. If you want to, if you want to like run that test scripts, if you want to if you want to like run that particular test script for like 100 different datas, then each of that run that you run is called as a single iteration. So if so, if you are like going to perform many iteration runs on a particular test script, you need to make sure that you have enough data in order to run all those test runs. So the important thing it basically is you need to make sure what kind of data you are going to use and also you should know whether you have enough data in order to do the automation. And then the next important thing is you need to recognize the initial and end condition of the test. Initial condition basically means it is the state of the application before the test run and the end condition means the state of the application after the test was run. If you are going to run your test script for various iterations, you need to make sure that the you need to make sure that the um, that basically the last step in your test script resets the application back to the same initial condition how it was before you begin running the script. That is what I mean by that is you need to basically make sure that the final state of the application after the script was run is is in the same state that it was before the script started to run. So in this way you can run like various iterations. Or else if uh, this is not the condition then you know when the script tries to like run for the second iteration then it might file. That is because the end condition of the application is, is, is not the same as the beginning condition. And the last and most important thing is you need to make sure that you have a standardized naming, con naming convention. It might be for naming the action, naming the repository and also naming the test script. You need to have a standardized convention and you need to follow that convention. So these are the five important things that you need to make sure that you know 
before you begin to automate. Thank you for viewing the video. Because of the video size limitation, we cannot post the complete video. Please visit www.learningdom.com to view the remaining video. Thank you.